Now, speaking of foreign relations, Nigeria's Consul General to South Africa, Ambassador Oke Emuche, is retiring, having put in a little more than 31 years into Nigeria's foreign service. There are speculations, though, that he might be going into politics, but he did not confirm that in this interview with our correspondent in South Africa, Betty Debia. Instead, he talks about what it's been like serving Nigeria in this regard, which happens to have been a childhood dream for him. And as for his future plan, Ambassador Muche says he'll be spending a lot of time in his village of Agumiri in Abia State. Just take us back to your first day as a diplomat. You must have had dreams and, you know, vision to, to contribute your own bit to, to the foreign service. What was it like? Um, um, I, I had a dream to join the foreign service. Um, my father was related um, to the wife of um, a foreign minister in Sierra Leone, who later became vice president, uh, His Excellency Francis Minor, who is deceased now. And then my father also knew the first foreign minister of Nigeria, His Excellency Dr. Jaja Wachiku. As a kid, I knew these two people. Uh, they asked questions about what they do. That was a passion. That was what took me to the foreign ministry. You've been to so many countries. You've attended a lot of uh, diplomatic events, and uh, you've coordinated quite a number. Let's look at the value to the name Nigeria, which to many people has really gone down uh, uh, a lot compared to where we're coming from. What do you think has brought this about, and what can we do to, to improve on this? Um, I think I would uh, differ a bit. Um, um, I'm so proud to be a Nigerian. Uh, we still have one flag, we still have one passport, and I'm a very patriotic Nigerian. What Nigeria is passing through now is what um, several other countries have had to pass through. Um, nation building is not an easy tax. Nigeria is facing her challenges. Mr. President is on top of the issues. Um, we've done well, I must, I must confess. Um, Nigeria is a huge country, huge. The largest black nation on earth, um, as the statistics indicate, one out of every five black person is a Nigerian. Um, we have all what it takes to do better, but we haven't done badly. So those who have experienced it, they know what they're getting from there, which is why, uh, as you say, the government has to do much more. I, I'll give an example. I, I had my views about the U.S. still, till I went for the the, the International Visitors Leadership Program, which took the group that I was with to different states, and now I, I can talk about America. So are we going to be seeing stuff like that? You see, each country has its own problems. Each country is peculiar. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm sure you, you could have heard the controversy of, of, uh, of the Obamacare in the United States, where the President of the United States was trying to um, get the Congress to give insurance cover to more than about 40 million poor Americans. That's number one country in the world. You have 40 million uh, poor people. So each country, um, South Africa, Nigeria, Egypt, and all of that, China, India, you have lots of poor people. But that shouldn't be the focus. The focus is about development. The focus is about creating opportunity for people to leave the pits of poverty onto a more, um, um, a, a better life. Um, so like I said, the responsibility is on us Nigerians and then the government of Nigeria. And I know the government, the federal government, Mr. President, is doing its utmost best to take Nigeria to the path of growth and development. A lot, a lot of good things happened. A lot of relationships were established. You were also here during the invasion of the consulate by the police in 2011, I think. You were here 
you sent in a protest letter in 2013 over the death of uh, Obina Waja. And now we've also seen a long list of Nigerian people here. I know every day there is a murder case about South Africans as well, but Nigeria is what concerns us. How do you think this can be stopped? Because most of the cases just get swept under the carpet. I've, I've covered some of the court cases, and the people are granted bail, and then we don't hear much about it. Mm. You see, it's, 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 uh, it's part of the responsibilities we have um, in the mission to cater to the welfare of our nationals. It's uh, very sad um, when an individual is killed, more especially when a Nigerian is killed under circumstances that um, are avoidable. As you are aware, um, our, our job does not allow us to carry the placard, but we employ the diplomatic channel um, to, um, to make contact with our host authorities and we have never, we've never failed in discharging that responsibility. It is sad. Um, we uh, continually put pressure um, on the way and manner in which we should to um, uh, exert justice um, to ensure that the perpetrators of these um, crimes are dealt with through the due process. Um, we work in tandem with the High Commission in Pretoria, um, but unfortunately um, we've had in the last couple of weeks, we've had um, three uh, sad deaths um, of our nationals. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a thing of pain uh, when incidents like this um, happen and happen too often. Do you agree with those who say that uh, Nigeria is usually very soft about this, not just in South Africa, in so many countries. In Ghana, we have had cases, I mean, that close to Nigeria. That Nigeria is usually very uh, conciliatory. I don't know if that's the right word. They're, they're softer towards the, the aggressor. What, what do you have to say about that? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, when uh, our nationals die overseas, our missions um, are always on top of it. It's a thing of pain to lose somebody. Um, you have people dying all over the world um, every day, every second, uh, but um, within our own jurisdiction and in countries where we have missions. Our missions are always on top of it, and it's to establish what happened and to ensure that the due process is followed and to pray that um, incidents of this matter don't happen, um, don't happen too often. Finance Minister was here last year and she talked about reciprocity because Nigeria makes a lot of concessions for South African businesses over there, going over to Nigeria, that there must be more openings for, for Nigerians or, or other nationals coming to do business here. But let's focus on Nigeria. And yesterday, when you were talking at your send-off, you were saying you, you, you had a, 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 a suggestion for those who are trying to do business here. Can you just go into it a little bit? Um, uh, as you're aware, we, we, we have just had our rebranding. So the Nigerian economy, in terms of GDP, is now number one in Africa, ahead of that of South Africa. And I said to people that rebranding didn't really capture the whole story. Uh, bankers tell me that only 20% of the money in circulation goes around the banks. So a lot of businesses in Nigeria are in the informal sector. And if statistics have to be put together, and then you add that volume of business, the figure that has been released will surely be bigger than what we have. So the Nigerian economy is a huge one. That of South Africa has also been, over the years, structured in a manner that determined their economy pre 
um, uh, the appetite, during the appetite period in particular, and then 20 years after appetite this year. They've had a lot of efforts in the power sector, in tourism, in infrastructure, uh, in power, just to mention not this. South African banks, Standard Bank of South Africa is more than 100 years old and has um, an equity structure of uh, about $100 billion. So the point I make is it doesn't, it shouldn't be economically wise for you to have a Nigerian bank come over here to want to come and compete with Standard Bank of South Africa. I, I wonder what what are the issues addressed at the, say, the Binational Commission? You know, it, it's got a lot of criticism, like what are we really trying to get out for ourselves? I'll give you an instance. Um, during, during this last uh, state visit of Mr. President in May, Cape Town last year, uh, we had a business forum that was one of the most successful ever. The state receipt itself was one of the most successful Mr. President has undertaken. It's not because I participated in it. One of the things that came out of it was the issue of license for Nigerian banks. It turned out that they have not applied for food licenses. That's the truth. I will have many efforts together with the High Commissioner in Pretoria to encourage them to apply for license. They haven't done so. So they're just operating at some corresponding houses or whatever. They need to apply. Some of these other hurdles um, are because of ignorance. When you go to a foreign country, you have to get in touch with those on the ground that will advise you as to how to do business there. We also encourage South African businesses that want to go to Nigeria to please get in touch with competent people at the Nigerian end so that they understand what the rules and regulations are. Thank you.